All right, so welcome back to the second half of the seminar uh, with Chang Long Zhong, uh, telling us about elliptic classes via the periodic module and the 3D mirror symmetry. So please, please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so the next part is about this, uh, the Modulusi carburetor in elliptic case. So I use the same notation for, I mean, both of them are denoted by T, but since they are really in different contexts, I think there should be no confusion. So yeah, we have just const uh, constructed this t-state group algebra and also this periodic module, which are vector bundles over A cross A check. Okay. Again, let me remind you that A is equivalent cohomology of point and uh, A check is equivalent cohomology of a point where the torus have to be has to be used uh, replaced by this t-check, the uh, torus for the London's dual. Okay. So you really have to consider things over A cross A check in the same time. So then we can define this, the modulistic operators for elliptic case. But for that one, first we have to define the coordinate function, just like when you write on this uh, K-theory, the modulistic operators, you have to use this E alpha, the notation. And uh, so they are, they are basically coordinate functions. So for the elliptic case, the coordinate function are defined as follows. So the abelian variety A is T lower star tensor E. We know this is basically E to the nth power and uh, the coordinates are defined as follows. So I give you any alpha in T upper star, any root or any character. You can define a map going from this abelian variety to E by sending this tensor <clears throat> to this pairing between alpha and mu check. So mu check is a co character so you take the pairing with alpha and alpha check, which gives you an integer, and then you can multiply with t. t is an element in capital E, okay? So this linear map extends, and uh, so if you take an element C and from A, you denote its image to be, so C alpha is denoted to be chi alpha of C, okay? So that's like the coordinate of C <clears throat> at the alpha direction. You can do the same thing for the other abelian variety. So if you have lambda in mu cross t, mu tensor t, you can again. So after you fix alpha check, which is a co character, then you can consider the pairing of alpha check with mu, and then which gives you integer and then multiply with t. So that's the coordinate of lambda at this alpha check direction. So that's chi of a check of lambda. Okay, so that's the meaning of the notations C alpha and lambda alpha check. So keep in mind that both of them belong to E, the elliptic curve. Okay, so with that, then uh, first let's recall this uh, theta function, <coughs> Jacobi's theta function, which is the product of, so, for u in C star, invertible complex number, you can define u at one half minus u to the negative one half, and then take the product, this infinite product, with this one minus q to the s u, multiply with one minus q to the s u to the negative one. And then there's an actual piece here. Okay, this has nothing, this is does not depend on the variable. So here q is the parameter that you choose to de define this elliptic curve. So that's basically the multiplicative version of the Jacobi theta function. And we can, that's a holomorphic function over some double cover of this C star because of this one half exponent. And for us, we really like to work with the additive version. So we can replace this theta by the other theta. So this is the curly theta, that's the normal theta. Okay. So in this case, this X belongs to C. Okay. So Riemannian and Weber, they usually use this theta, but we like to use the other one. That's more convenient for us. Okay, with that, then we can define this, the modulistic operators, T alpha. So it's basically, again, it contains two parts. So here I can, here's the K-theory version. So it has two fractions. So similarly here, we also have two fractions. So all the fractions involve the theta function the additive version of the theta function. And then the variables h, which belongs to e, that we fixed at the beginning. C alpha belongs to e, lambda alpha check belongs to e. So this is difference of two elements in capital E. 
And uh, so <clears throat> that's why we have, that's why this theta makes sense. So we consider this fraction, okay? And we have this fraction. And also notice that for the denominators, the denominators, denominators are the same, which is similar like the K theory case. Denominators are the same. And also if you look at the zeros of the poles of Z, you have a zero, you have a pole at zero, you have a pole at zero, now you have a pole at E alpha equal to one, a pole at E alpha equal to one, okay? And uh, um, the other thing is like, so for this part, you also have H minus Z alpha. This corresponds to this one minus Q E alpha, okay? And also I made a mistake in the notations that is this Q in the K theory case, corresponds to the C star, C star action on the flag variety, uh, the cotangent bundle. So this Q has nothing to do with this Q, okay? It's just, I should have used Q here, I guess. This is more standard, okay? The two Q have no relation. And also for the K theory case, you have this one, the Y group action S alpha. For the elliptic case, you also have this S alpha, okay? The actual piece is this S alpha D which appears in both of the two fractions, okay? Remember that S alpha acts on A, S alpha D acts on A check, okay? <clears throat> so this is the formula obtained by Riemann and Weber in, in their work in the geometric construction of the elliptic classes. They use for the semisonal resolution and they studied the recursive properties of the elliptic classes, they obtained this formula. One can also obtain this formula if you study the work of Feather when he was talking about this, uh, studying this um, dynamical quantum young baxter equation. He also come up with some solution and the solution involves some fractions, which will be just this, the two, okay? I believe the his work is for, for type A. I'm not familiar with other types, but for type A, if you look at his solution, he will have some fractions. The fractions can be put in here to obtain this T alpha, this operator, okay? And uh, one can also define the Lalland's dual version. So we call it T alpha D. They are very similar with each other, okay? There's some uh, symmetric property here, which I may skip for now because of the time, but they look very similar with each other. So for instance, you see the numerator, that's C minus Linda. This is Linda minus C. And that's H minus Z, that's H plus lambda. Okay. So there's some similarity between the two. So that's the elliptic version of the modulistic operator. And uh, now they satisfy T alpha square equal to one and T alpha D square also equals to one. And also they satisfy the braid ratio. So that's the elliptic version. So with all the construction of this, the modulistic operators and uh, this periodic module, we can start to mention the main result. So the main result, the first part is that we prove that T alpha and T alpha D, both of them are rational sections of S. Let me remind you, S is this direct sum of W inverse upper star V inverse D star L inverse tensor with L. Okay, that's the twisted group algebra. So this T alpha and T alpha D, both of them are rational sections of this S, okay? So to prove this, one has to study the zeros and poles of this T. And also by using the property that over elliptic curve, uh, if you have a rational section of some line bundle, the zeros and poles of the, of the function uniquely determine the line bundle, okay? And the other property is that we can define, the other result is that this Riemann Weber's um, elliptic classes is, uh, can be obtained by applying this TW, uh, TW inverse applied on C. Now, what is C? C is just some rational section of L that you fix at the beginning, okay? After you fix this, you can let TW inverse act on this periodic module. You will get elliptic classes, and then one can prove that this elliptic classes corresponds to the Riemann Weber's elliptic classes. And also, so that means they are also equal to Aganagic or Kunkov's uh, elliptic stable envelope. Okay, one should also know that this C is always there because in their definition, in Akonagic or Konkov's definition, they have to fix a polarization. 
this polarization corresponds to the C. So in other words, if you choose suitable polarization, you will get the result that you can identify this with their work, okay? And you can do the Langlands dual version. <clears throat> you can use the same C here, okay? So that's the second main result. And uh, now the last one is more related to the 3D mirror symmetry that we mentioned before. That is, you can take the sum of all the thermodulistic operators. You can also take the sum of the thermodulistic operators for the Langlands dual version. And both of them can be realized as maps between periodic modules. The first one can be think of as maps from M to MD. The other one is a map from MD to M. Okay. Also note that in the definition of the T, there are a lot of the denominators. So they are not, so the T here are not global sections. They are only rational sections, okay, because they contain holes. So the result we have is the following. That is the T and TD, they are dual, they are inverse to each other. Okay. So with that, one can recover. So then recover 3D mirror symmetry result of Riemannian and Weber. Okay. So um, that's the main result. So is there any questions? We're good. Okay, so um, I have 12 minutes. So first let me mention some remarks and then if there's still some time, I can talk about the idea of the proof or maybe some ideas. So the first one is that in Riemannian and Weber's work, they also have another recursion. Instead of this uh, Bort Samson recursion, they have another one, they call it a matrix recursion. We believe that that recursion can also be obtained in this way. That is, it's more like if you have TW inverse act on something. Now, if you apply a T on the left, you get some recursion. That's the Paul Samson recursion. If you apply T in the middle of the two <clears throat> objects, you get the other recursion, okay? So this is not verified, but I believe this is true. So <clears throat> one just have to write down the the um, calculation and then to verify with their calculation, okay? And the other one is this Bort Samuelson, uh, no, sorry, this uh, free Mackay transform. So <clears throat> one can define HD to be the elliptic hack algebra with dynamical parameters. So this will give you some coherent shift over A cross A check, okay? Some algebra object over this A cross A check. <clears throat> then there's also the definition of this Ginsburg Kaplanov Vasarot elliptic hack algebra they defined in 1996, residue construction of hack algebra. <clears throat> they define some uh, elliptic version of the hack algebra. There's no thermodulistic operator because uh, they do not satisfy the parade ratio, but the algebra is well defined. So you can look at the hacker modules, and they are this gives you a subcategory of the coherent shifts over A. Similarly, you can do the Lalan's dual version, which gives you a coherent shift, a subcategory of the category of coherent shifts over A check. Now in the middle, you have this coherent shift over A cross A check. And then this composition is called the free Mackay transform. That is, you take F, you tensor with F tensor with the temporary line bundle. Oh, sorry, you pull, uh, pull back. So if you have a shift over A, you pull back to the product and then you tensor with the P, the concrete line bundle, and then you push forward. Q, so Q low star is the push forward. Sorry, that's another Q. Okay. So the composition of the two gives you an equivalence of categories between the two categories, sorry, a derived version, you have to derive them, okay? The direct, the, it does not give you an equivalent of categories on the abelian categories. You have to use the derived category. That's the so-called free Mukai transform. And then what we prove is that one can start from the hack 
a GKV hack module. And then you can pull back to get a module over A cross A check, and then tensor with L. And then you push forward to this category, okay? And then this composition, we prove that this is a com uh, equivalence of categories. And in this case, you don't need to take the derived category, just the current category is good enough. Okay, that's some work of myself. And this should appear soon. So that's the second remark. And the last one is that about properties about light bundles. So we know that light bundles over E are uniquely determined by their, sec their sections. In other words, theta functions. And the, the zeros of theta zeros and the poles of theta functions are uniquely determined by quasi periodicity of the theta functions. So all the four parts uniquely determine each other's. Okay. So that's why if we can determine the zeros and poles and some elliptic classes, you can recover the line bundles. Conversely, if we know the line bundles over E, we can recover the zeros and poles of this rational section. So they are almost so. I mean, one can use information from one side to get information about the other side. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I have eight more minutes. So is there any questions? Very good. Good. Okay. So maybe I can say a bit more about the idea of the proof. So this is the construction in this tensor triangulate, uh, sorry, this uh, tensor <clears throat> category. So remember we defined this twisted group algebra to be this one. So SWV is basically the, the piece at the gradient WV. And the tensor structure is defined as follows. You just define to be, so the tensor of this part, this WV piece with this XY piece to be this one. And by definition, this tensor is isomorphic to this, uh, this WX VY piece. Okay, now if you write down the rational section of this, I mean, for people in combinatorics, they like to work with actual elements. So what you can do is you can look at the rational section, say A, oh, sorry, A, a rational section here. But if you want to indicate the degree, WV, you can use constant Kuhlman notation. Similarly, if you want to take a section of SXY, you can take a rational section B, but if you want to indicate X and Y, you have to use the other X and the other Y. And of course, things are confusing here because this V are really the dynamical version, uh, part. So that's why in this case, we have to put a D here to distinguish between the two, okay? And the product, if you write on the product, it will be equal to the constant Kuma twisted product. That is, it will be equal to A, W, V, D of B, delta W, X, delta V, Y, and there's a D here. Of course, it's easy to see that the two wild group actions should commute with each other because they act on different pieces. So that's why it doesn't matter how you write W, V, D or V, D, W, it doesn't matter. It will be the same. So this product is really the constant Kummer twisted product. The only difference is that here you have two well group actions, okay? But they commute with each other. So that's why this is still well-defined. That's the meaning of this tensor product, okay? And the other point I want to make is that, remember we defined um, the T and the, the, the modulistic for London dual as rational sections of S. But if you can, you can change the S a little bit TW, TWD will be still there, and uh, they can be think as functions from a uh, maps from this to here naturally, because remember we define SWV to be this tensor product. Now, if you apply W up star on both sides, you are going to get this identity. W up star of SWV equal to this line bundle times with this line bundle, but that's the inverse, so you can automatically write it as maps from the first line bundle to the second one. So this more or less is saying that you can think of it as a map from M to MD. And similarly, if you apply VD star on this identity, you are going to get this, uh, this tensor, which will be giving you this one. So that's why 
you can think of it as sort of like maps from MD to M. So that's the reason why this TW and TWD, if you take the sum of them, they will give you maps from M to MD and the other one maps from MD to M. And then, as I said, they are inverse to each other. Okay, so that's the construction. Okay, so um, so that's why this T and this TD, they are inverse to each other. I'm sorry. I mean, there are maps going opposite direction, and then one has to prove that they are really inverse of each other. And this proof does not, I mean, it's not technical because <clears throat> one can just use some uh, functional, uh, sorry, uh, canonical properties and uh, a little bit calculation to prove that they are inverse to each other. Okay. There's no technicality involved. Okay. So um, I think three more minutes. Ah, there's also the Pantori pairing. So um, I think I don't have time to go into detail here. So I will be very brief here. That is, so we know that this twisted group algebra act on this periodic module. And also there's another version. That's not the Lalan's dual, just the same version. The, we, we are still in the same context of potential bundle of gma b. There's a variant form of this S, we call it S prime. And uh, you can also change the M into M prime. So then Pankuri pairing is really pairing between this M and this M prime. So it's not over the same M, it's M tensor with M prime, okay? The tensor of the two will be isomorphic to this line bundle. This is a line bundle over A cross A check. And this line bundle is defined as follows. This O tilde is defined to be the following. So we know A cross A check, you can project to the first component A, and then we know we have this coordinate map chi rho. So then this O of 2H, this is a line bundle, degree zero line bundle over E. The corresponding veil divisor is 2H minus zero. 2H is an element in capital E. So this veil divisor gives you this line bundle degree zero line bundle, you can pull it back to get O tilde of two H row. So the tensor of the two will be isomorphic to this degree zero line bundle. So that's why if you fix a rational section of this degree zero line bundle, which is this fraction, one can <clears throat> use this to define a pairing going from M cross M check, M prime, sorry to O of A cross A check. Of course, we know <clears throat> A cross A check is a billion variety, so this is basically constants, okay? So that's the meaning of this concrete line bundle, so. So why is to use the concrete line bundle to, uh, sorry, concrete pairing to transform between elliptic classes here? And there's another version we call it EW prime. So then we have that. So if this is EV, this will be equal to delta WV. So this is the Pankri pairing in this elliptic case. Okay. So basically, the construction and the proof of the main result uses the two things. One is this Pankri pairing, and the other one is this construction of this twisted group algebra. Okay, so my time is up, so I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk.